Can a SQL developer learn Snowpark, the Python programming library available with Snowflake? The answer to this question is yes and certainly yes. You are an expert on SQL scripting and having a background on Oracle SQL or a SQL Server SQL and got some degree of familiarity with Snowflake. So what is the next question you will have in your mind? How can I learn Snowpark? Will it take a lot of time? Where can I find resources from? Or is it a complex technology to learn and master? And that's what we will discuss in this video. And you will get complete clarity how a SQL developer can become an expert Snowpark developer and what path they will have to follow to become an expert, including the prerequisite. So if this is what you want to learn, stay tuned until the end of this video. Welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified and to this everything about Snowpark playlist for true data professionals and data engineers like you. And in this episode, episode 5, we will try to find the answer for the question, can a SQL developer learn Snowpark and if so, how? We have already finished 4 episodes in this playlist. We are going to discuss many different topics related to Snowpark which is covered in this 12 to 15 parts playlist. You can pause the video, review the topic and jump to the specific episode if that interests you. Link for all the videos can be found in the description section below and above in the info icon. These videos are recorded in 4K resolution. Follow the instruction for better resolution and to learn it faster. I have a quick announcement before we move further. I have already published more than 100 videos covering different topics under different playlists. And if you find it hard to get into a specific topic or a subtopic or a concept, refer this summary card or a cheat sheet. The download instructions are given in the description section. For additional queries or specific questions, feel free to drop a note to my Instagram account. Before we go and discuss about the path required for you to learn Snowpark for Python as a SQL developer, let me talk about my own playlist. I have been adding a lot of playlists around Snowpark Python and each playlist has a specific intent. One playlist is focused on end-to-end -end use cases. Second playlist is focused on basics of different APIs provided by Snowpark and how to use them effectively. Both these playlists are hands-on. You can download the sample data as well as sample Python script from my blog page to practice them. And one of the important thing, I would suggest you to watch at least last four chapter of this playlist. Those four chapters gives a lot of clarity about Snowpark, what it is, what it is not and many more things. I would suggest you to watch chapter one of this playlist that talks about Snowpark's computational model, its client server architecture versus server side deployment architecture as this will be a new concept for a SQL developer. Also watch the chapter three from this playlist that covers different competency levels when it comes to Snowpark and what is expected from different competency levels with respect to Snowpark API. This chapter will give you a good clarity where you want to grow as a Snowpark developer and what effort needs to be given to grow and what all API must be learned as a part of different stages. And in our previous episode, episode 4, we covered how much to learn from different API and what all official documentations are provided where you can start your journey and shortcomings with respect to each of this Snowflake documentation. So let's start. Let's first discuss competencies of a SQL developer. As a SQL developer, be it Oracle or a SQL Server or any other standard data warehouse platform, you have following technical competencies. You create different kind of database objects like table, views, indexes, create stored procedure, packages, function and triggers, simple to complex data types and file formats like CLOP, BLOB, JSON, XML, external table, temporary table, partition table, jobs, etc. And once all those things are done, during the life cycle of a data project, you perform optimization, debugging, testing, monitoring, data import and export activities. If you look in this list, unless otherwise all your logic is wrapped inside a complex view, the majority of the business logic for data transformation is applied 
through stored procedures, packages, functions and triggers. While writing stored procedures or packages or function, you use lot of programming constructs like conditional statement, assignment operator, exceptional handling, iterating through cursors and manipulate data and also perform lot of DML operations. You tie multiple stored procedures together and invoke it from a job scheduling system to execute on a routinely manner. And if you are comfortable with stored procedure way of building data solutions, learning Snowpark is primarily learning Python syntax and Snowpark specific data frame syntax, which is equivalent to your cursor object in your stored procedure world and manipulate your data using different Spark APIs. As a Snowpark Python developer, you need to have a working experience with Python, else it will be hard to master Snowpark. Next, you must build awareness and working knowledge on different Snowpark Python API as listed in this pyramid. If you are an experienced SQL developer, it will not take more than two to three weeks or maximum a month along with your day-to-day -day office work to build a good hands-on experience on Snowpark Python library. As a SQL developer, you always think in a procedural style and not in the way of build modular functions as well as a reusable component. And if you look into this example, as a SQL developer, it is a common practice to use a case statement and you will find many such case statement in your SQL project. But if you look at the right side of the screen where case statement is wrapped inside a method and the input parameter is passed and then it is invoked from a data frame. So, if you are trying to build a career in a Snowpark kind of a technology, you need to think more like a programmer and the programming world provide much more flexibility to achieve such goals and that's the biggest challenge most of the SQL developer finds learning technology like Snowpark for Python. If I take another example where employee and department tables are joined together followed by a group by operation and then applying a filter with having clause. And if you see the query based approach versus programming approach, this is how it look like. It's not a very difficult to program them. But once you build your thinking model in a programming way, you would find it very convenient and easy to learn this technology. If you look at the entire development lifecycle while building data product, we spend time designing the data model and integration approach followed by development activities where we write queries, procedure blocks, workflows, jobs followed by testing and then deploying these objects in our target production environment. When it comes to Snowpark Python development, your approach will be very, very different. You need to think more like a programming way or I would say Snowpark way. How will you create different directories where your Snowpark Python program will reside? The common module will reside under util directory or a file. How to test them locally? How to deploy them? Client server way or a fully server based deployment? followed by data ops activity. So if you look into this diagram and if you go to the SQL legacy way, the approach of deployment is a very, very different approach of deployment followed in Snowpark Python way. If we have to define a path to learn Snowpark, here it looks like you can learn Snowpark without knowing SQL, but that will be a very, very odd situation. And I'm sure your working efficiency during the development activity will be in a big question. So, you must be proficient and having a good working experience with standard as well as advanced queries, analytical queries, stored procedures, function and database modeling. Since Snowpark runs on Snowflake, it has many specific objects like file format, stages, task, stream, cloning and RPAC and many more and you must have a good working knowledge about them. Without having a working knowledge on Snowflake objects, it will be hard to understand the Snowpark API. The next prerequisite for you in this learning path is to know Python. There are a lot of content available in the internet where you can learn the Python programming language. While learning Python, you must understand how to import different modules, different kind of built-in functions, data types, control statements, important Python libraries, virtual environment, how to debug and test Python code. And once these prerequisites are done, then you can start learning Snowpark API. And when we say we have to learn Snowpark API, you have to understand the session API and their usage, data frame API, reader writer API, file operation APIs, 
stored procedures, UDF, UDTF, and different deployment architecture. And if this looks so much and you do not know where to start from, you can refer these two playlists that has lots of hands-on with real life examples and will help you to gain basic understanding how Snowpark Python programming looks like. And once you get a fairly good confidence, you can start more formal way by following this chart. I assume this chapter has given a path for SQL developer to learn Snowpark. Thanks for watching episode 5. If you have learned something valuable from this episode, don't forget to press on the like button and share with other data engineers or Snowflake developers. And as a part of this series, in the next chapter, we will learn a very interesting topic, Snowpark Python versus Snowpark Scala, a very debatable topic even in the Apache Spark world. Happy learning and keep growing.